Welcome to What's My Thesis. I'm your host, Javier Proenza. Every week, my guests and I share the answers we found to the questions we have. Join us as we explore and expand our worldview through research and ask, what's my thesis? And today, my guest is Sarah Nishikawa. And uh, hopefully, I didn't put too much of a Latino spin on that. <laughs> Nishikawa. No, that it's great. a chica Nishikawa. <laughs> uh, no, that's a, yeah. Just um, pronounce every then, vowel. What's that? You just pronounce every vowel for like every Japanese vowel. last names. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Um, and you are uh, from Detroit, right? Or are, not from yeah, maybe, but you, I'm not you from, just I'm there? based in, yeah. I'm, um, I've been here for five or six years. Um, oh, I okay. moved, yeah, so not too long, but um, yeah, five or six years now. Where are you originally from? Um, I, I grew up in Hawaii, so all the way on the other side, and uh, lived in L.A. for six or seven years and then moved out here to go to school and then stuck around afterwards. Cool. So you, yeah. so, so that was the draw. What school it was, are you uh, also Cran- Carnegie Mellon? Uh, Cranbrook. Yes. Cranbrook. Sorry. That, I, I, I'm, Similar I'm... silliness in a name. <laughs> Similar silliness for sure. Yeah. Um, there's I a, only there's know a... because Claire Gatto talked about it. Yes. There's uh, a chunk of us here for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, go what? Ahead. No, go ahead. I'll ask later. I was just going to say it was really the only reason I would leave California. You know, I when I was applying to grad schools, I was like, it's either figure it out in L.A. or like this will be the only school I leave for. So, yeah, but it, nice. you know, kind of worked out. But yeah. And uh, yeah, because Claire was saying that uh, it's like a very English cottage village kind of vibe. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just yeah, outside of Detroit, the, the, the university. Is yeah, that how you feel about it? That, you know, they also grew up in the Midwest. So they've got a like view, you know, they've got like a different, I it, I thought it was much more like uh, it, it, the, the architect is Ariel Saarinen and he was really inspired by like Danish and, you know, mid-century. He was sort of the beginning of, of mid-century modern. Don't quote me on that. That might not be correct. I'm not a designer, um, but it's got a very like, uh, yeah, like Danish Netherlandy feel to it. It's a lot of crispy lines and a lot of like concrete and stone. You know, okay. they love a brick, but it's also just um, like a built forest in the middle of a of a of a suburb. So it's an interesting cool. place. Yeah, if you ever what, what, go to the Midwest, it's for sure one of those like architectural visits you got to do. Yeah, like uh, kind of how they, they have the architecture tour in Chicago where you have to sort of like get the sense of like the history based on how crazy all the like because th- that's where the stories are, right? Especially in Chicago, there's a lot of mob stuff. So I, yeah. it, it, I'm, now I'm picturing like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> Amish like gangsters. Maybe it's because I watch <laughs> <laughs> too much uh, Banshee on Showtime. But uh, I want I mean, I wish... <laughs> there's so many Amish communities out here and, and folks, I, I wish that was the case. The, I hope okay. for it. <laughs> you never know. There might be some like really um, sinister stuff going on just behind the, the veil. <laughs> um, so what, uh, so you said, you mentioned that you may, that, that you started off or, I mean, obviously you, you grew up in Hawaii, but uh, you started off in LA or you were in LA for a little bit of time? Yeah, I, I, I moved uh, to go to college. Uh, I moved for school mainly. So I, I moved and I went to um, but what, Loyola ma- Marymount. Guess, what, oh yeah. What, uh, what made you stay in the area and, and not come back to LA? Cause it seems like, like I, mm. I, I've asked the question specifically as someone who came from Miami to move out here because of LA, but it's interesting that you made the move away from LA, which I totally understand. I'm just, getting a sense that the Detroit art scene is a little bit, um, it doesn't get its due because like, it seems like from talking to you and Gerald Collins and, and, uh, Oh, (laughs) that is the, the the expression that, uh, that would put, I would, that Gerald Collins would put on my face after talking to him. (laughs) It's a, it's a small, it's a small scene here for sure. So you kind of get to know everyone on a, on a, in a different way. I don't know Gerald very well that personally, but he's somebody that, you know, 
within the little circle and works with like Knox and Danielle, you know, they, it's just all the same. And he works, he worked a lot with bulk space, just a great person. So, yeah. it, it, um, but so then, so then it is, is it's, are there other collectives like you guys, like bulk space and other stuff like that? Like it, how, how yeah. I'm trying to gauge how big of a art scene it, 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 like it maybe doesn't have, it sounds like it maybe doesn't have like the, the, the uh, Hauser and Wirth's and that tier so much, but it has, yeah, or does there, it? There's the, so, you know, there's two sides of it. There's the, like, the thing I really liked, especially leaving LA was you can, ex- you can access things here, right? You can access spaces there. It's, it's much more entry level. You can sort of start your own space. You can get your own studio. There's a lot more opportunities to s- sort of start. I felt like, you know, in LA, it was a little hard to, you go to openings and it doesn't really matter at all unless, you know, no, it, that, that's fair. Yeah. You know, it, it just feels a little harder to start your, I, I, I listened to yours. Um, you interviewed Kellen King, who I went to school oh, with. Yeah. You know, um, Kellen? Maybe like, yeah. Oh, okay. So I just joined, uh, I, they just, uh, you just joined uh, Monte Vista. Yeah. So, oh, so I, oh, that's yeah, yeah. so exciting. Um, yeah. Emily is there. Emily Blake Jones is there yeah, as well. Yeah. So you know all of those people? Oh my God. Yeah, we went to school together. So they're, I mean, they have to, they started their see, own project. Wait, when did, when did, the, didn't Emily Blythe Jones go to CSUN? Mm-hmm. So uh, is that so, where you guys went to school together? Yeah, I, I went to undergrad um, by LAX at LMU and then I went to Northridge um, the same time they were both there. Okay, all right. So that, yeah. that so, so okay. Because there's a lot of like, younger CSUN like they mentor a lot of the the CSUN community and it's that's like so <laughs> that's so I mean but there's Kellen so many like, like such kids at the, at the gallery oh, sometimes really? you know yeah it's funny it's like I just it just makes me feel so old <laughs> <laughs> I've never made it out I never I every time I come back to LA it's always over the summer so there's never really really anything yeah. going on there but I think like it's kind of hard to start something like that took a lot of people and a lot of power and that took them quite a while. And there's a lot of other folks in the Bendix building that's kind of making it work, but that, that there is a lot of, you know, you need a lot there to start something We're here. Like you just need, it's a lot more community based and it's a lot more like helping out and a lot of people collaborating and, and people like, you know, you know, somebody who knows somebody who can help somebody do this. Like it, it, it feels really small um, but in the same way, it's, I talk to some other folks in bulk where like, there's a ceiling, there's a bit of a ceiling and maybe that's me being full of myself, but also like, mm. there is no, how there's no like moving up. There's the DIA yeah. and MOCAD. There are four or five galleries that aren't, there are no David Kordansky, but you know, that after, once you were working at one of those larger spaces, you know, kind of where do you go from there you don't you working, know it, what, do you, what do you mean working as an employee or working uh with them as uh, la and being represented maybe both you know i worked for um as an employee i worked for this great gallery called Ray's mm-hmm. finn um and they i love them so much and they make they have such great artists but you know working for them it was sort of like well i i could get promoted within this gallery and I could take on more responsibilities, but if I want to work for a bigger gallery or a gallery that maybe has, you know, that does fairs in Basel or, you know, or, or, yeah. or and grow in a role that doesn't really exist here. I met a, one of the better galleries here. And, and so it, there's a little bit of a, there becomes a, a bit of a ceiling at some point. Yeah. Um, but, but it's How also this- a little more affordable here. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, that is one of the insane things, you know, like, um, but how accessible would it be to you as an artist to show at these spaces? Or is that like that, that, that's now, now the same question, but in terms of you being an artist within that space and trying to reach this, that ceiling, right? Like, for sure. Are, what what kind of uh, stuff do those spaces show? You don't have to specifically talk about that one, but you get what I'm saying. Like, yeah, uh, what kind of what kind of work is like considered? Uh, I mean, 
Not that I'm like that well aware of, like I know who Mark Bradford is and all that shit, right? You know, I'm like I'm not like completely ignorant, but to the, to to some degree, like, is there? I don't know. It's really hard to imagine what like the art market in Detroit is. It, 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 can you speak to that a little bit? Ooh, those are so. I guess in my mind, there's a bit of a division, right? There okay. is the art market side of the art world. And then there's like the practicing artist art side of the art world. Yeah, right? like here so, in LA too. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm guessing for sure. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, it's the same everywhere. The you know, what I'm saying. What's the equivalent of like Hauser and Worth over there? Mm. Not that there is one, mm. but I'm just saying like. What, so then, like, what can you compare it to them to like a mm-hmm. LA gallery that we might both know that might help? Is it like a Joan gallery? Do you know that space? Very small gap. Very small fires. Like yeah. In, okay. I would say that. Okay. So, so like, all right. so, so, so for example, so more, more specifically the gallery I worked for, which I thought was one of the more, one of the bigger galleries in, or one of the galleries doing a little bit more exciting things here. Um, we did not every year we do independent in New York. We went out to LA for Felix and did a bunch of art fairs, um, show, LA artists show New York artists show Detroit artists um have like big group shows you know have access um the, our director came from uh Mitchell and Nash right so like and then there's also a gallery called Library Street Collective that is maybe even serves a bigger clientele um uh and there's a few other galleries that are doing that but they're all quite small right we're all still a staff of three yeah. working with four or five artists nobody really has like capital r representation maybe they do but it doesn't look like what it looks like in la where it's super exclusive and hard to get um getting into those spaces as an artist is still the same challenges i think in as in la we were a little bit more fortunate because but i say we but like a, a lot of folks are if you go to cranbrook you get different eyes on you if you, you know mm-hmm. A lot of the, all of the yeah, galleries yeah. will come to Cranbrook, you know, so it, it looks a little different. Um, but there are so many artists run spaces like that are doing huge things. Like there, yeah. um, there's this great residency called Pops Packing, and they like bring in folks. That, you know, they have like family. It there this the amount of smaller spaces is much wider, mm-hmm. and those are accessible. Like. I've shown at a lot of the artists run or smaller spaces here. Um, and that is more popular. And that is a thing that you, you, yeah. you kind of get around to more than it is going to be the like, you know, those like top ones are still kind of selective, but there's not, there's no hazard. And there's, no, there's not going to be any. Hazard no. Yeah. No, I mean, I didn't expect yeah. it to be, but it's, it, 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 it's also possible that there could be too, you know? So I don't want to just one, be like, oh, one there's mega no. gallery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I, maybe maybe it's because I've been talking to you guys that it's become bigger in my head and I've been thinking about Detroit as an art yeah. place. Um, to, 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 to be fair, a lot of big galleries like to do things in Detroit. So like, I want to say like four of Jessica Silverman, who has that gallery up in San Francisco, like four of her artists live and work in Detroit. Yeah. You know, um, uh, I don't know what they're called now. Moran Moran, maybe they used to be mm. called Moran Banderoff. They, you know, they did, they collaborated with an artist that they work with here and, and, and rented out like a space here and, and did an installation. So like, I think a lot of New York and big LA galleries come to Detroit because yeah. it's like low stakes. You're not trying to sell work. There's not really an art market here, but you can like take up a lot of space for a very little amount of money and have people like come and see it because we're so close to New York and Chicago. So there's like a lot of like low stakes, big projects. Um, cool. That and what, what, when you're saying that this, the artist run spaces are doing big things, because it does feel like as exciting as places out here are, it, it like there's there's a limit to the scale at which you can do stuff like right to some degree. To some uh, degree. I mean, I'm not like I'm not shitting on L.A. by any means. This is my scene <laughs> and, and I love it. I- but, Honestly, I, I threatened, I, we would literally just bought a house, but up until the day I signed the papers, I was like, I'm just going to move back to LA. Like yeah. I'll quit my job. I'll throw everything I own away. I'll just, I'll move back to the West coast. 
<laughs> yeah, it's been weird d- during COVID. It, yeah? it feels, yeah, it just feels like even more isolated than than anything else it's ever been. You know, like, I mean, maybe it's just me, but I'm like, I hang out with people kind of, but not, not like, um, like for, it's just feels easier to do stuff alone in your like neighborhood and your area when you have your time off. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe all of my friends are partying without me, but I don't, I, I don't get the sense that that's the case. No. So, so you're not you, even, even like, I, I thought it would be, you know, less isolating because like a weather wise, you can be outdoors all the time in LA. And then like, once they lifted restrict, oh, well, I guess there was like a lot of intense restrictions before they were lifted. Well, the mask mandates are back. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that. I think maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe I just have, maybe I just, it broke. It is a little nervous. COVID malaise, you know, that I've been feeling. Yeah. (laughs) It was gone and then now it's coming back. But either way, like uh, there was a period where everything was locked down and I didn't have a car. So like, I was like, I I was definitely isolated in Los Angeles, you know? Are you on the, are you on the east side or on the west side? I'm I'm on the east side near Chinatown. Oh, okay. Okay. But, um. Yeah, that's not crazy walkable. I mean, it's all right. It's, and I'm not too far from downtown, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, did you have a topic today? We've just been rambling about like, <laughs> no, our, I'm no, so I mean, I mean, I'm, no, this is, I asked, I asked all the questions. I'm just super interested because, you know, as I, like, that's kind of the idea of having all of you guys from Detroit on, you know, like, and, um, and I think it's a folks with like quite different perspectives. I moved here in the snobbiest of ways because I missed everything about Los Angeles and had never lived in the Midwest. I can't really stand the weather, um, yeah. you know, but also like there are some, I, you know, and I, I do wonder, and I've been thinking about this a lot is like with the absence of mega galleries and such a focus on the capitalist side of the arts, like maybe mm. that's where a lot of this tighter community supportiveness feels like it's coming from. Cause there, there's not the same sort of, competition of like it's me versus you to get into this space everyone is like no we'll like make our own space like here you can just like create your own little pocket and you know figure out your ways around um without it being like there's two and we need to get into them you know yeah the entry level to just have a space here is is so expensive (laughs) just real estate it makes it so uh, i mean inaccessible you would be it it is getting also very bad here. Like, yeah. per, you know, I, I folks are already getting priced out of of places here as well. And like, bulk space has a building, but we can't get any funding to really do anything about it. You know, like you can buy a five thousand dollar building, but there's no money to do anything else with it. So you know, it's one of those like. Did you ever resent like when, you know, like Austrian artists or German artists did residencies in LA and you're like, you motherfuckers. So <laughs> on a very personal note, cram the, my, my, uh, mentor. And by Kramp that, by, I'm, not, I'm not just, I want no, to clarify well, Germans have funding from the state. <laughs> like I'm not shitting on Germans just out you, of nothing. But, but you kind of should. So the, so I worked with, so my mentor was Danish and him and his partner are Danish and both of them work with the Danish arts fund. They just have money. Like our, our friend, um, one of my friends is also like the Danish arts foundation is so supportive. This is my pitch for the Danish arts foundation to please support your podcast as well as like, they just have like, they're like, you have a project. What is it? Here's some money. Like oh, Jesus. you, you, you know, uh, you want to do like a, tr- you know, I think they were inviting curators from here to go to Denmark to do studio visits with their artists. It's like, where, are, why are you all getting so much money? Yeah. I learned that they have these like things called three year grants where they just like pay for you for a couple of years. You know what I mean? They're like, here's some support. You can work. You can do. We can't you can have, have nice things in America ever. It's. I'm so upset about it. I'm yeah. upset about it all the time. Well, when that when like my sense is that when they come and they like visit LA and there's like well, there's a couple of residencies over here that that I've uh, I've come across people from and like it also is like there's like culture shock there because there's like a, a an iciness that I think. Uh, Germans tend to have 
But like it feels a little bit like when um First of all, it's like it's like you, now you guys are coming in and you're getting all these opportunities that like artists here would kill for. And like I don't want to be too scandalous, but it feels like when uh when white women go to Africa and take pictures <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, I'm in Los Angeles." And like, "Yeah, they're rolling out the red carpet for you. Why?" <laughs> you know, it's like I mean. some foundation. So it just it it it's like oh. It's, it makes me, as an artist, it just makes me feel like, oh, man, I got to, like, show in my own house. <laughs> it, it, it is it is infuriating. You know, I mean, that's not worth it. Yeah, it, it is the, like, oh, I, it's also the thing. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to pick my words a little bit more carefully, knowing that this is going to be recorded. Um, I get a little uh, wild sometimes. So. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I, the other thing that is driving my current thought is I got a new job which is very exciting but Mm -hmm. it is part of it is having conversations around um it's programming and and my lens is sort of like creating um accessible programming whether that means like folks who just accessible programming um especially around like equity and so uh it is the, like, if your government is going to give you a ton of money, you're probably going to have space and time to like make great work and go to residencies. But yeah. if your government gives you no money and is like, can you have a full-time job that gives you like 10 vacation days? It's like, well, I only have 10 vacation days and I either have to choose to see my family or like go on residency yeah. and then pay for that residency. You know, so it is the, like, yeah, out of your own I pocket. get extra <laughs> jealous because I look at them and I'm like, yeah, I would love if my <laughs> government paid me, and also I got opportunities from that. Like it's across it's the pond, dumb. and I became an international artist <sighs> in the fucking mar- art market that everybody, like, dude. And then, and then, the, but like, and then it. Uh, the other thing that happens <laughs> is that like it's fun. they're problematic dude they like like we're we have this whole like cultural thing where we're trying to be conscious about colonialism and shit and they're just like they're like i've had germans come and tell and talk incessantly like just like shut up level about like polish people which is especially troubling <laughs> And then I had I had a, a another one that was like uh, that 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 she was Austrian and she goes she's like uh, you know like sorry <laughs> trigger warning but she's like talking bad about somebody that was in the gallery that was represented too and she goes she goes and she was Asian and she was like gesturing to the face and I was like and like there was a bunch of us like just sitting there like oh, what. <laughs> excuse me excuse me it it's fucking crazy and then so then those people so that that group of people i'm not gonna name names but at one point they hosted a show in like not in the bendix building which i you know the bendix building has its own like sort of like moral quandaries and issues right like uh, you know, as, as a, that I have to deal with as, as a Montevista, as a newly minted Montevista new, member, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you know, but, uh, these guys were just basically hired to throw like an art show in this loft that was newly built. And like, and then I had friends from here that were showing at that. And I was like, mm, mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> you know, it get, it's like, oh, you guys there, just like th- don't respect the space at all. Like the, don't care about the culture. Of, yeah. There's a couple of spaces here where we do a lot. Claire and I can be judgy bitches and, and we do a little <laughs> side eye of like, Hmm. Saw your name yeah. on that on that group show. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Do, it you gets know, deep. making yeah. choices and not all of them good. You know, or yeah. you know, but it it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think we could <laughs> we could get both of ourselves in a bit of trouble. Oh, um, I'm always doing that. It, the the good yeah. thing is that no one listens to the show. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 
that's what you say and then there's gonna be an la times article that's like there's this podcast and then just throw shade at everybody (laughs) dude if i did throw shade i would probably be bigger (laughs) (laughs) because then the community would listen (laughs) claire claire and i have like talked about just having a hot takes podcast of just like (laughs) here's our hot take for the week like it's not nice but I don't know. Well, I mean, we I think that I think that the people that I've referenced in this episode so far are either people I don't know personally and are not directly connected to me, especially the, not the hear it. yeah the people that come to to yeah. like uh, the Germans and the Austrians that I've referenced and the friends that uh, I've talked to about it, like uh, that 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 like that uh, that are associated with the story. They fucking know what I think about that, you know? So <laughs> it's not like I'm, like, behind their back, you know? I'm just not naming names. So, yeah, yeah. but, like, uh, what's it called? We do have a topic, though. Let's yes. dig ourselves out I'm of this so one. <laughs> my, my thought of my topic is I run a one-day baking residency where I invite people into my house, um, and then we choose something that they've never baked before, but they've always really wanted to bake. And then we bake it together. Um, the sort of like there is, Oh no, now I'm going to forget what they're called. There's some, an artist named Mark Fisher and they run a printed matter. Ooh, I can't remember what they're called, um, right now, but it's out of Chicago. And he was doing this like one day residency where he would invite people to go shopping with him in this Korean market. And then they would eat Korean food afterwards as this, like out of, you know, um, when you're out of your element and you sort of like bond over this, like non-elemental thing, but, but, you know, basically though, I bake a lot and it, and food and preparation around food and being in a kitchen in that domestic space fed so much into my making practice. I went to school for ceramics um, Mm. that I thought it was a really nice like alternative studio visit to have folks bake with me, you know, to like, whether you're like good at baking or not, it's something I am at least like knowledgeable enough in where like we could figure it out. I've had a couple where we like barely figured it out, but for the most part, we just like spend the day baking together. The whole day. Okay. So I'm I'm getting very, very, uh, is it, is, is there, there's not like, it's, is it wrong of me to just associate baking with British Bake Off? Am I just like the most basic uh, (laughs) person? No, I love the great British Bake Off. So there is, it it is such a, I think it's such a perfect show in a lot of ways because Uh it's not there's nothing polished about it right like they they'll show drippy cakes and they'll show like things falling apart and it is a very fun um I I I it wasn't like an inspiration but I do remember watching it and being like oh no I wasn't saying that ding dong can bake a cake so can I there you know but but I think a lot of it um I hope it's not as messy. I feel like they're a physical <laughs> mess on that show. No, what I what I was saying is that my like because I don't have any direct experience with baking myself. Although I, I've had other Never. bakers on the show. I mean, I've baked like you know like brownies like mm. with with uh, with the like pre made mix <laughs> and stuff. The like eggs that. and the oil. Yeah, and... yeah. It's not like yeah. it's not like I've ever used flour in any capacity <laughs> <laughs> at such a pure raw <laughs> form. Like that's like way out of my experience. But what I do, what, what I, what I, I guess the reason that I was bringing it up is that like my sense of the vibe. You know, like obviously, you're thinking of it in the and and yeah, there's definitely a lot of messiness in the show, but it's also like kind of the most relaxing competition show that exists, right? So, so I'm guessing I'm getting a that's that's more what I'm referencing that soothing vibe of like, oh, these people are gonna fail and it's gonna be okay and they may cry, but like the stakes are just, they didn't get a fucking plate. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, it, it, I mean, that the is stakes like, are bragging rights. They're not even the losing stakes, out on money. There's not, there's, it's really just worst case scenario. It's not delicious, but it was like <laughs> fine. You know, like the only, <laughs> the only, I mean, it's, 
I think to it should be an affirmation. <laughs> Worst case scenario, Worst it's, scenario not, it's delicious. not delicious. <laughs> that might be the title of this episode. <laughs> I mean, I'm a really ugly baker. It's it. Um, I think so. I, my background is in ceramics and like craft in general, and I think that makes and I like to bake. So I think people think I'm a neat person. Um, mm. But I bake really ugly things, and my focus has always been like if it tastes good. Um, but the, you know, I always thought of it as like studio visits are really overwhelming and they're really overwhelming for me to be like, this is what I made and this is why I made it. And like, Mm -hmm. do you like it? Where like, you know, especially if it's tied to nostalgia, if you like, Oh, you know, if your grandma made a pie and y'all used to make like a pie together on Thanksgiving, like, and you just never really had the energy to make a whole pie from scratch, or you were nervous because it has a lot of steps to it. Like I'm a person I've made a pie before, or if I haven't made a pie, like, you know, I learned how to make biscottis with somebody Mm. and the first round of them were bad. And so we just made another batch of biscotti. You got to double bake those, right? Yeah. It's like a pain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got to like bake a cookie, let the cookie cool cut the cookie bake the cookie again yeah yeah it was confusing and and i <laughs> and i honestly don't really like biscotti so it was also one of those like i'm not gonna enjoy this biscotti. <laughs> um but do you ever dip them is, in anything sorry go ahead you had, had much tea. more interesting no th- no, no no as we were baking them we went and got tea there's a great like tea shop called soccer tea here um <laughs> so we like went and picked out tea i mean i think it's also like to spend a whole day with somebody where it's the lowest of stakes there's nothing really to do except for like make a batch of cookies or or i mean we've had we have made bread before which is a little bit more stressful but you know just in terms of timing but you know it's it's really like i don't know it's like spend a day together where there's not the only agenda is like we'll make this thing and maybe have people over and eat it together and you you keep referencing it as a studio visit. So are you are you showing any artwork at all? And during this process, is it just like a way to break the ice? We're gonna do this and then also do a studio visit, or is the process of making it the what you consider the studio visit because you're maybe talking about ideas that are relevant to practice anyway? The second one, the second one for sure. It's it's the like just the way in, I think, you know, I think when artists get together, you kind of end up talking about big ideas or or things that you're interested in. And um, without like a prepared speech, just a sort of like, uh, you know, when I frame the baking residency, which is called Mostly Butter, it's so steeped in nostalgia because that's what my work is so steeped in is like, it is is so based in is like, this reimagining of these nostalgic objects. And so, you know, talking about my things that I had baked before is, is usually like my grandma and I did it or my mom and I, or my aunt and I did it, you know? So there's like, it just, I think goes back to her. That's my hope is it's like a nice enough environment where people can just talk, you know, we can sort of just kind of get into it. Um, I also on a, like, I think people's work, I'm a little bit more interested in people's work as a, like from a conceptual place and then Mm -hmm. talk about the the objects and see their work Um, more than I am like an object, uh, always necessarily like I see an object and then that's sort of where I start. No, I mean, I'm obviously on board because this is basically (laughs) what we're doing right now. We're just, we're not, we're not making cookies. So there's even, uh, we're, we're just, you know, uh, almost getting in trouble. <laughs> I know. So there's a different kind of uh, excitement and danger. <laughs> I did. I, I I have been thinking a lot about like stakes a little bit though, and there is something that's super fun about like just all like I think that where I started th- to think about it is just like uh, why drugs are fun. You know, like. You, you, if you separate it from all the tragedy and like all, you know the all the why all the fun drugs food. are fun. Well, no, I would say just drugs <laughs> in general drugs. are fun. Like, like I, I mean, you know, like 
like let's be real like people get, obviously they're addictive and there's bad qualities to them right yeah. but like I, I think it's weird that we're like that we call people child abusers and then also drug abusers like we're like who's the subject <laughs> you know <laughs> like you get what i'm saying is that weird is that like a weird thought <laughs> does that make no, sense it, i see it you're I, I yeah no I, I I get what you're saying in the like one is a human being and one is a like you, it, you write like a conflation of one with the other doesn't really make sense well like okay in the case of the child abuser the abuser is the person that's abusing the child right yeah. but but the drug oh. it, it, but in the in the drug abuser the I abuser see. is the fucking victim we should right? call it pharmaceutical abuse is what we should call it part of some yeah. pharmaceutical company abuse if we're well, calling no. it that yeah i mean yeah that gets on the meta thing but i think i just think that that's like an interesting sort of like i i don't know i mean sh i'm sure that's like you know it's as clever as like saying her story instead of history <laughs> like you, you know or if you like if you really that. think <laughs> if you really think about it, it's like history comes from the word historia which is like a feminist feminine word right so it's like <laughs> yeah. you know so i don't know if it's like there are other examples Examples where the abuse that with that verbal relationship exists. So I don't want to make like, be like, oh, but it is an interesting thing. The way that we think of like, like, I don't know, man, the way that we think of that, we don't have to go on a side tangent about drugs, but they are fucking fun. The, I guess the, the thing that, the, the thing that is like the dangerous part of it, you know, like even if you end up in a fucking room where you're partying with people and then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, it just got dark. Like people are like freebasing something. This is like years ago, by the way, <laughs> I'm from Miami. You got to understand that context, <laughs> that cultural context, right? Even there you're like, yo, that shit was crazy. And I got out of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then I'm good. And, and there's like a relief there, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, oh, yeah. I do think That's that there's yeah. there's something fun, or maybe I'm just absolutely self destructive. Maybe I don't, you know. <laughs> but I think that 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 is sort of like also like there's like with what we're talking about, there's like intimacy, right? And and you're cutting you're cutting bullshit from uh, <clears throat> you know it's like. Like the topic doesn't really fucking always matter on the show, right? Like that's what it's all it's <laughs> just it's just a conceit so that we can talk and get to know about you by what you're interested in instead of like talking, you know. And like and fuck it, I'm always down to talk about I get bored of saying the same shit, you know. I talk every week. <laughs> Truly. I mean I, I I you know, I was doing them like it it is the it it's I think about teaching a lot, which is like, you know, I'm sure interesting, but when you teach college, it's the same syllabus over and over and over again. Yes, you have different students, which can be very exciting, but for the most part, you're like kind of going through similar things and, and, yeah. and there's like a repetitiveness that doesn't always feel very exciting. But when you like throw something into the mix, like, um, somebody wants to make a Yule log. Do you know what a Yule mm. log is? It's is like... Yeah. Isn't that just like for the fireplace? Like, oh, it, no. So it's like this. Like, I want to say Julia Child made this. Um, uh, it's a. Wait, it's a chocolate. Hold on, you laughed at me. <laughs> a Yule log is. Me. No, I'm not <laughs> upset. I'm just saying. Like, am I wrong? Is that not also a Yule log? Um, I think it. Or is Yule, or, or have they been referring to that? It like is that that Christmas time? It's a Christmas time. I'm sure it's a Christmas. All right, I, you you keep talking. I'm gonna look it up real quick. <laughs> that, yeah, I know. Like you, I have no idea. But it's the it's the it's a like a jelly roll, but like a chocolate and cream roll covered in chocolate ganache with meringue and spun sugar all over it. So it's like this really intrinsic, intense, like very technically skilled um, thing. And, you know, and somebody wanted to bake it. And I was like, oh, this is going to be exciting because this is going to be 90% of what we talk about, which is like, I don't know how to make a jelly roll. I don't, I can't eat whipped cream. I don't know how to make chocolate ganache. I don't know how to, you know, like, so the whole thing was like us being sweaty and sick because all we ate was sugar all day. It took us like nine hours. Um, and, and then we just sat in my yard and we're like, I don't want to eat this. I'm Have you I'll, thought I'll of making this a YouTube channel? I don't, I know that that makes it performative. So well, it might take something, but this is. Yeah, no, but this it's sounds fascinating. Like, I would love to watch this. 
I, that's the only reason I'm not like, I'm not trying we to like, like we, you know, you make you a yeah. podcaster, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I like take photos throughout the whole thing, but I, I am concerned about the, like, you know, I do, I, I, I would be concerned about losing that intimacy of like feeling like you could kind of just say anything or talk about like, mm. you know, and, and because there is a bit of nostalgia, like with the Yule log, we started talking about this person's family or like their family traditions and why it felt you know, why they were never able to make this cake with their family. And, and, um, you know, that, that sort of a thing, I don't think everybody would be like, so glad we're live on Instagram. Um, but it would be fun <laughs> for the, like, I made a, Claire and I made a, um, a crepe cake, but both of us aren't patient enough to wait for the crepes to cool. So we started building it with like whipped cream and curd, and then it started melting. So we really just had like, soaked pancakes and it was like this tall versus being like this tall it was a full mess and we just sat there and we're like yeah i'm i'm tired let's let's be done with this <laughs> <laughs> and by the way uh, uh, uh so yes the yule log is also known as a yule clog and a christmas block and it's just like a tradition it's a specially selected log that they would have as a, uh, on the hearth as part of a Christmas tradition in regions of Europe. So that, so, but it, it's, Interesting. It, it's, it's so, it's probably named after that, but yeah, like, it's uh, probably named after that. I mean, it's, it's a lot, you make it in the shape, the cake, you make it in a shape of the, of the log. Of log. So that, that must, that now that you explain what it is, must makes a lot of sense. Makes sense. It's a special log, I assume. Yeah. But it's <laughs> just like, you know, for all the hype, like it's just a Christmas block. You know, <laughs> like every year, and then I had to look it up, and like, and I just I was like, "What is the Yule log? What is so mysterious?" And I finally find out what it is, and it's just a specially selected log. It's a dumb piece of wood. They just yeah, put a yeah. piece of wood in front of their fire. No, it's our special Christmas piece of wood. It's different from all the other ones. I we leave the, the biggest, Christmas nastiest wood. one. <laughs> and it's in a hearth too, so it's not even a fireplace. It's like for cooking, I think. Do they, do they heat the log or does the log just sit there? Like, does the log go into, like? I think, yeah, no, it's, it's specified burnt. Oh, okay. okay. Anyway, we can end the log, the Yule log <laughs> definition segment. I was just curious. It's such, it's, it, these, sometimes things are weird. Uh, like, what's it called? I grew up, like, in, in, uh, in Italy and I had, I went to a British school and, over there, like the Christmas traditions are so fucking weird, you know, like when, when you, when you think about, like, when I think back about it, like, it's like, I don't like, first of all, just the way that they talk about like father Christmas, it's so <laughs> patriarchal and this really weird, <laughs> you know, it's not Santa Claus. It's like father Christmas. It's, it's really weird. Uh, I don't even remember. I, I kind of regret starting this cause I don't have any other concrete examples, but like, how it's old like were it, you when you went to school there? I went there until I was 12 from six to 12. And then oh, before wow. that I was in Central America in uh, Costa Rica, but oh, the, the, what's it called? It's, it's so funny, like, I don't know, just like all of those traditions when you start really like picking them yeah. apart and like, uh, I don't know. Well, and everybody has their own like versions of Christmas traditions, like, uh, growing up in Hawaii because it's, there is a lot of like Asian folks in Hawaii, like mm -hmm. Christmas and, and we don't have shit like snow and we don't have weather. So there's no, there's like Christmas traditions look so different because a, the food is super different. Like, I don't think we had Christmas ham or if we did, we also, I'm half Chinese and we also had like Chinese food every, you know, my grandma would just like yeah. cook a bunch of whole fish and we'd have like, you know, a Chinese food and, and so you had a Jewish Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> like, but then also like we're i grew up also super catholic so it was a very confusing like tell you know, me about that it, it, I, it, i'm oh man this is my favorite area go ahead <laughs> oh really <laughs> i'm i'm roman catholic i mean not anymore oh, okay. but like oh, okay. I'm, I'm, but a lot of my art history yeah, yeah, I, you no. can't really like shake it off you know you can't that's my point i have crucifixes name. i have crucifixes that i can't throw i have away. the dumb little candles from my uh first communion or whatever you can't yeah. take things away from me um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so, I, yeah is it there are there a lot of uh 
is it because you're from Hawaii or is, are, is there a lot of Chinese Catholicism? Okay. Yeah, my grandparents are from New York um, and okay. Chinatown in the Bronx. So there's just a, there's like a lot of Korean Christianity and there's a lot of Chinese Catholicism. Catholicism um, specifically, though. Specifically How the Catholic. Fuck? Yeah, was it like it, was it uh, Marco Polo? He t- yeah. he stole the, he stole the the the, the spaghetti, <laughs> the noodles, and then gave them. It was like here, fucking deal. You will take the good <laughs> shit, <laughs> make it even better, and we're gonna just ruin you, burden you for the rest of existence. <laughs> I honestly love him showing up with like a Bible and noodles and just being like, I got you. <laughs> and then Americans just make a, du- make up a dumb swimming game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I wasn't very, I wasn't very bright as a kid. And also we didn't learn American history it because again, it's Hawaii. So like all of our history is I have a lot of Hawaiian and native Hawaiian history and a lot of of Asian history, but I didn't know that Marco Polo was a person. Like maybe they taught it to me, but I I don't think I took U.S. history after like sixth grade. So like yeah. I didn't know this was a person until I was way too old to be like, oh, he's like a whole human being. He did a yeah. lot of bad stuff. Was it when they put out the Netflix special? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just learned that Massachusetts isn't i i just learned where massachusetts was i always thought it was oh, yeah. below new york you said I, like, something don't that know was anything. fascinating i'm just like not me. that bright what? you said something that was fascinating just a second ago you said uh when i was young i wasn't that bright is that did you say I, that i i wasn't i yes i i did I, are you sure you just weren't learning disabled and maybe that's like no, you just weren't no, diagnosed no, no. No, that's so no. harsh. I've never heard anyone say I was dumb and now I'm smart. Or well, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm smart now, but I wasn't <laughs> like <laughs> I wasn't. I I wasn't paying attention to. I the only thing that I would say maybe undiagnosed is that I had selective hearing, but that's okay. just that I didn't want to listen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think there, like, life just passed me by in a lot of ways when I was younger and and that like I really I don't think I learned any of the states on a map I couldn't fill in one of those like but that that doesn't necessarily mean you're not bright I don't get the vibe that you're not bright like I I I don't know I don't we're not gonna do a therapy I was We're gonna not, say you, sh- you could also ask a couple of my teachers, and I think they would say. The same <laughs> but I think thing. that that's like I don't know, dude. If, if I if I define myself on my academic prowess, I'm fucking you know. That's oh, why yeah. I'm not. That's why I chose to do a podcast instead of go to grad school. Well, fucking. it's also why I went to Cranbrook because <laughs> there's no grades and there's no classes. Oh, but what I think maybe mean? you just learn differently. Like I don't know all the fucking states. I barely know where like St. Louis is, you know, and, and that's not yeah. even a state. See, there you go. <laughs> exactly. like, that's a city. <laughs> but no, okay, but okay, I will flip it though. I do love embracing being dumb though. Like, just like, oh God, it's so much easier yeah. than to like kind of. <laughs> yeah, I'm not here to like prove to you that I have any sort of intelligence. I'm fine with people being like, you know, uh, is is nice, but like not that doesn't have a lot going on i'll be like that's fine that feels okay to me (laughs) that is fascinating i feel like i've met you at this point (laughs) yeah uh i don't know i what generation are you gen uh gen x or or gen millennial um i think i i'm a millennial you're a millennial i'm yes i was it 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 I was going to fully make my topic today, the Fast and the Furious franchise. Oh, um, uh, well, you, we can, then we can I have got you come back nervous. to talk about that. Because <laughs> then I got nervous <laughs> and I was like, oh, he'll then know I'm a millennial and I don't need people to know that up front, you know? Like, that's oh, a, that's that fine. can be a sneak attack. Dude, <laughs> the, the like, only reason I ask is because now there's a whole nother gen after that, you know? Like, there's, uh, there's Zoomers. Gen Z and then below them. They're not them, Gen Z, there's, gen, there's Zoomers. Sorry. <laughs> I'm poor. You know, I, I'm at the bottom. I think I'm at the bottom of millennial top of those folks. And I'm just in a bad, I describe folks who are within like one or two years of me of, we grew up with technology, but we are not smart enough to use it. Like, yeah. I am not good on TikTok, 
but I have never been without a computer, you know. But do, like, you, do you have a TikTok account? Is that important to you? No, because I don't know how to use, okay. like, I just don't know how to use tech. Like, I'm just not, like, quick on technology. Like, I think okay. the Zoomer. Is that, like, the Zoomers. <laughs> I, I had to, I, when I got my new job, my boss was literally like, can you just spend the first week, like, learning how to use Zoom? Because I had never used Zoom. Um, cause my job didn't, I didn't have to do it. Yeah. I worked at a gallery, so we were in person. And so I was like, sure, I'll learn how to like unmute myself properly. And, <laughs> you know, like not, I, I had just learned how to put like hats on and like backgrounds and yeah. So very... Ke- Kellen did an artist talk and I, and I s- listened in on zoom and I did it on my phone. Right. And I thought yeah. that I, I thought I was muted. So I was playing video games <laughs> and I was cursing at the fucking television. I still don't, I still haven't watched it because they posted it. I still haven't watched it. <laughs> so I oh, don't I'm gonna know. Find it. <laughs> it's the one where they interview uh, Daniel Trejo, who's also oh, a, yeah. a, a, a new member. Yeah. So, oh, and that one. He, I love his work. Oh yeah. He's, he, I, I, lo- I really like his ceramics. But uh, the uh, the what's it called? The, yeah. So I was like, I swear to God, I still think that I'm on that recording. I don't just think like you were. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, because yeah, I was like, I, I was like rage that. yelling at, at the TV. <laughs> but I guess I was far enough. And then when I and then someone said, "Hey guys, mute yourself." So I thought they were talking about me. <laughs> Oh, no. I fucking apologized to him the next day oh, on no. Instagram. I was like so embarrassed, and apparently <laughs> it didn't it didn't happen. But it's so, to me that like you know Zoom story Zoom is like even I use it, and even I think that like I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. So I'm definitely of that generation. Yeah. Are you, you, yeah. Were you born in the early '80s? Uh, no, no, no. I was the I was born in '90. '90. Oh, okay. '90. Yeah. yeah. So right, that's still mo. Mal- yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's definitely millennial. I'm like on the uh, cusp. I'm like because uh, eighty one is, uh, so I'm almost a millennial. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm even more hopeless with technology. Oh, eighty one. Eighty one is millennial. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, is... but what? Um, yeah. So like, so uh, d- uh, <sighs> sorry, we got so off topic. No, that's fine. I, I mean, we're just shooting the shit at this point, but that's fine. The so the the baking, it sounds like baking to you is not necessarily so much about like being the best baker. It's more about like like uh, what you describe your baking sort of messy. Is your work is like your ceramic work tight? Is it like uh, you know what, what what are we dealing with? Are we dealing with amorphous blobby kind of stuff? It's, Sharp um, edges, it, it, <laughs> built build <it>, pots. <laughs> everything sort of looks like maybe I'm like a first year ceramic student, but okay. it has like maybe like a third year ceramic student. So like knows how to like put things together, but doesn't know how to make them like cri- crispy. I wouldn't say crispy. So I make like, um, I've been making a lot of baskets lately. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so like laundry baskets or like... Um, yeah, like laundry baskets. I, 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 that would be a fine example. Um, but, but I think like baking and cooking and and those sort of like feeding things are a little bit more about like who you're with than it is necessarily. Like I could make and eat a whole tray of brownies by myself, but like there's something really nice if like folks are coming over to like cook together it's a lot or less like, sad <laughs> if you well, listen, i've done it i'm real, not i'm not casting aspersions <laughs> yeah i made a bunch of chocolate chip cookies yesterday and then ate them so you know yeah. we are where we are but um there's something really <laughs> nice about like sharing things i think you know an, another part of the residency is it's usually either it's been folks that i like know from detroit or friends of friends where like we just there's enough where like people can come over and eat with us and you know it can be like a very it's a, it's a really good way I think to share with people without it being like let's go get a drink but instead like yeah. we need a cake want to come over for like a coffee and a slice of cake um or like we made English muffins and like that felt like a really nice you know time to spend with people um and so yeah it's just it, it's it really is a good excuse 
to hang out with somebody. And I like to put residency on top of it. So people like think it's important, um, you know, <laughs> and make it a priority versus like, just come over anytime and bake it. It kind of like gives it a framework where people will show up and like, I don't know, be in a, be in a mood to maybe have everything melt and not work out, but also like, it will be fine. You know, it's a, it's mm. the cake will either happen or it won't happen. Um, uh, I also think there was like in ceramics, there's a lot of failure that happens, which is a sort of necessary part of it all. Um, I just had a, a friend just broke a bowl, um, my, fr- my dog's bowl and freaked out about it. And another one of our friends that also is a ceramicist were like, we don't care. It happens all the time. Like no. in ceramics, shit breaks on the way to the kiln, coming out of the kiln, <clears throat> glazing it after the kiln, like things break all the time and things don't work out and that's totally fine. And there's like a very nice part of baking with other people who don't bake a lot, which is like this cake will either rise or it won't rise. And if it doesn't, we'll make it again. Truly no big deal. You know, any of the pressures that you feel or any of the nervousness about using ingredients, it's like, nah, I'd like it's just steps. Sometimes you follow them correctly and sometimes you don't you know, takes a little bit of the pressure off of doing it on your own. Cause I feel like, you know, you would have to go buy flour, sugar, um, baking soda, mixing bowls, you know, all of that stuff on your own versus like, come over. Like I've got a lot of that stuff. We can yeah. fail together or, you know, make it something yummy together. What's the percentage of yummy to failure? Well, um, a few things we've made a couple of times but I would say we're at like 85% success. There have been some not so great things, but it's been a fun time. You know, it was just like, well, then you uh, can also relate about how terrible that tasted, you know? Yeah. Remember that thing that we baked that was awful. Only (laughs) one thing was awful and, and we should have known it was going to be awful. We tried to make one of those jiggly cheesecakes, but if you, have you ever seen those? No, but it's okay. So, so what, what, what happened with it? Oh, I want you to look. I also, I did that in the, like, you got to see a jig. They're like these Japanese cheesecakes and they're like, boy, they're like bouncy, but they're cheesecakes and they look beautiful and delicious. They look like bread, but they're like sweet. They Do look I so Google good. jiggly cheesecake? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, and they're on. like, you can watch like... There's an American they, singer called Jiggly Caliente. I mean, oh, that's... Jiggly Cheesecake is a thing. Yeah. They're like tall and they're beautiful. Oh, I see what these are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not what... I, I just couldn't stop thinking of gelatin. <laughs> oh, that's super gross. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that doesn't that's sound like... so gross. <laughs> I mean, I like gelatin, but as I gelatin... I do too, but... but... <laughs> I want that to be strawberry flavor. It's not a cheesecake. Yeah. Uh, but this, but this was bad. It tasted like, it tasted like cream cheese mixed into just eggs. Like it was oh, pretty, yeah, yeah. you know, we tried a couple of times and it was really fun and it was with a friend. So it wasn't um, horrible, but it, 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 it did taste <laughs> bad. Yeah. Um, and we, we kind of should have known. We like looked at the recipe and we're both like, we're better. We, well, let's just try it. Um, are you do do you is it like stuff gets burnt often and whatnot i'm just trying to yeah. get get an aftertaste of these experiences you know like because because yeah. like you know you've already described the fact that there was a day that you guys were just like comed out on sugar and i know that experience of just like you're like <laughs> it's a, it's a feeling that happens here yeah. <laughs> in the chest area and your like mouth is like sweet it's it kind of i don't know when i was like at 15 i got drunk on zimas one time and I, <laughs> I couldn't get the taste out of my or smearing off ice all those things are the same those malt mm-hmm. liquor beverages mm-hmm. like yeah <clears throat> similar that's such a specific that's like yeah. one of those like you keep trying to drink water but it's not water that's going to solve your problems, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, No, I mean, there's been so many, you know, uh, I didn't have AC and a friend and I tried to make hand pies in the middle of the summer. So it was like 90 degrees outside. It was like, I would say 110 degrees inside because my oven was on. My kitchen is in like a a five by 10 space. 
and like the butter was melting and we were melting and we were trying to like cook all this hot food while it was boiling hot and everything was like kind of flat and not ideal, but it tasted really nice. And it was like crispy Mm -hmm. and, but we were also like hot and was just like, well, this was a fun time, but we're dehydrated and sweaty. So I think that there's like, I mean, my hope is it's a nice balance between like that went really poorly, but like I had a nice time. Like I would like that sentiment. I, I, you know, from folks is like, it was sweet, but it was a sweet time together, but maybe everything was bad along the way. Like Claire and I messed up the crepes like two or three times before we really understood what crepe batter was supposed to look like. Um, Cause I don't know what crepes are supposed to, you know, we like. How long have you been doing this? I started it 2018 or 2019, maybe. When did I? Maybe 2018. I, I've, I've done quite a few, um, and then I paused during COVID. Maybe it's 2019. Like how often? Was, was this like a monthly thing, weekly thing? Yeah, it was usually about once a month. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just looking it up. Yeah, I'm the only asshole that does something weekly and just hates his life. <laughs> that's exhausting. I gotta be honest. That's that's gotta no, be. No, I'm gonna be better prepared this this next round. I just like I just kind of started this year, <clears throat> and I just didn't plan enough because basically you, what I, what I'm doing right now is I'm just making the show and not promoting it at all, and uh, and that's like the slowest way to do things, and it's very frustrating. Yeah. So. Now I have enough lead time that I can, I'm actually starting a TikTok. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then I actually, yeah, things are going good. I actually, I work on another podcast and I'm going to be uh, doing that for them too. So I'm going to get pretty good at clipping out like the most outrageous shit <laughs> that people say <laughs> to <laughs> grab motherfuckers, you know, cause like, yeah, yeah these, the, I, sometimes I feel weird, like just like. I, I have to be more comfortable in like taking people's words and uh, using them out of context, not like to make them look bad, but you know, like but worrying... to get people to get kind of people in. Well, it's I feel like sometimes I'm being a little sensitive because I don't want to upset the guest by like putting in something that they said that isn't necessarily wrong, but it's like it's probably going to upset somebody. But I, I agree with, you know what I mean? Like, it, like uh, uh, nothing like racist, obviously, or nothing like, like, just, but like, but I also feel like I don't want to like, just like throw all the like art snobs that are like, oh, well, you're so wrong about that at them, you know? <sighs> Do you get what I'm saying? Does that yeah. make sense? But yeah, I think you don't want to put them in more. like a position where they have to play defense or, 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 you know, or feel like maybe that they like should be wary about what how how they're speaking i think that the problem is that i am only showing one clip of each person at a time whereas if i mm-hmm. show more i feel like it's not going to be a, the kind of thing where like uh <clears throat> like i've had someone say that like i want you to take that clip down because it uh makes it look like i don't like uh people of, of a certain place right and and oh, uh, okay. that- you know like like for example, someone was talking about their baggage with Japanese imperialism as a person from uh, Korea. I think that it was, mm-hmm. and so they were being very candid about it, but the clip didn't include the part where they were remorseful and they sort of were like, "I'm full of shit," completely. And they were upset about that, but then they were they were also not really happy with the episode in general. And I was like, okay, just tell me what you want me to cut out, and I'll, I'll cut it out. And they like they were like they never got back to me because they just didn't want to listen to the episode. So like to some degree, <laughs> it's like you know, <laughs> it can be t- That's tough. It can be difficult, right? Like, yeah. and I totally took the clip down. I totally understood what they were saying. So like, so in that's that's a per- that's a very specific example. Yeah. That I think illustrates like it is a it is it, there's a like this weird responsibility that you have to sort of you know in terms of like because this is a public intimate conversation you can't sometimes you may think that you're not doing you're not putting somebody in a bad spot because what they say is interesting 
and you understand the full context in which they say it, but it's their fucking reputation, right? Or it's their, it's, it's also, however, yeah. it's how they want to be perceived. And that can be a little tricky because that's kind of go like ah, artists are very much in control of their persona. You get what I'm saying? Or they're, well, and, they, want, they, and want to be for sure. Yeah, Definitely they, they, like want to be. Yeah. And, and so, so that becomes a blurry line. I don't really sweat it too much and it really isn't a huge problem. Uh, but they are also not the best at following directions and that can lead into like conflict. They can be, <clears throat> they can make you, they, I've been gaslit by people that are just like, I don't want the episode to come out and it, like, they don't want the episode to come out. And I'm like, well, you picked the topic. You fucking came on the show. We recorded it. And I sent you a message telling you I was going to release it in two weeks. Here's the message. And they're like, um, they're like, well, I didn't know it was coming out. I was like, well, you can't say that anymore because I showed you that I sent you a text message telling you I was putting it out in two weeks. And you said, yes, go ahead. And it had the fucking date. You know, like how it doesn't always end up with the date lined up. Yeah. And so, and I was like, I was like, you know what, dude, I'm not putting the episode out because I think you're fucking crazy. It also, it, it became a little bit of like a, there was, it, it was like a white woman who was using a lot of language that is like, sort of like, kind of like, you know, like fuck with me and I, I'm going to, I'm going to use, I'm going to weaponize womanhood. And, and I was just like, and then the fact that she was gaslighting me, I was just like, uh, you know, and like. She's like, she's known, she's, she's around, you know, like if we're, if we're talking about people that are in the art scene that I've had bad experiences with, like, if you don't see me hanging out with that person, it might be them. (laughs) If I see you walk away from a crowd, I'll be like, oh, I know who that is. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, but, but yeah, man, it was, it's crazy, dude. Like people, like what was really upsetting about that situation is that they were like, I know a lot of people in the art world. And I was like, yeah, but you know, yeah, you know, a lot of white people. And then they were like, and then they were trying to like, make it like, you know, they were trying to make it like, no, no, that's not what I said. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what you fucking said. Look what you said, you know, and then loud. Yeah. And so, no, in writing, Uh, in writing, people have to be a text message. If you're going to be like, if you're going to be maybe racist isn't the word, but inflammatory or like use your privilege so boisterously, like don't do it in a text message, you know, like be smarter yeah. than that. Like, no, I still, I still call. have them. I still have them. It's fucking fascinating. Like, you know, it's not, yeah, it's not insurance or anything like that. It's more of like, it's like to remind me that shit is crazy out here, you know? And like yeah. people are fucking ambitious and, and like, that like that I, I tell that story mostly because about the control that people have about their persona right sure and then yeah. and then and and so now i'm in a situation where like i it would be tacky of me to to like name who it was right yeah. like it, it's yeah. it's getting in the gutter but in terms of talking it about it as an experience that i've had doing the show i feel like that's not that's not a problem it's more about like the conversation then becomes less about the individual but more, more about the mindset of certain people. Right. And it's crazy. It's crazy that that happens because it can be like, um, like you have intimacy and you, and it's a loser. It's an illusion. Like right now I feel like I know you better than like, I could, I could have met you at an art gallery. We wouldn't fucking know each other this well. Right. Like it's the same thing as you were saying. That's it's like, and we could have done a studio visit, but we may have had like our, our, chest puffs up art or hat, hats on and yeah, you like, know everybody was in a is was in a way with a different goal versus like you and know you're, I, and you're and you're doing it by your school's rules versus <laughs> my, my schools for oh, like a little bit goodness. you know and Honestly. so like <laughs> <laughs> but but it is it's a fucking wild thing like it is i, I mean now that i've stopped and taken a break for like a couple months just because it was mm-hmm. just getting to be like, but well, I also just needed to fucking start looking for different employment opportunities in the real world. And, uh, and then also just instead of like, Hey, let me book like 30 episodes these next two weeks. I'm like, why don't I just let time pass and the episodes bank build up and I'll be nice and refreshed and I'll have all this stuff 
edited and ready, you know, are yeah. all the clips ready to promote? Because that's the problem. Yeah. Like, basically, I'm just on a, I, I've been on a treadmill and there's no like new traffic being directed towards the show. So it's been. Well, and it's it, also, like, I think it's so important. And I think nobody lets artists have this, but like, you don't have to be on all the time like you you know everyone else gets to take breaks and shit but like artists are always supposed to be like making and producing and doing things where it's like no like you can't really make good you it's hard to make good work to be genuinely engaged to participate in wholeheartedly if you don't get those breaks you know if you don't get that time to like you know do other things or experience the world in other ways or even just be like i can't talk for a full hour every you know like that I think it's nice to to say like look around to be like all right how do I want to refocus this and who who do I actually want to engage you know and and how do I want to do that actively and I think that what I'm going to what the bank is going to give me a chance to do is also take a week off every week you know like because I only have to you know like I'll have enough episodes where I can at least record an episode every week but I don't have to like worry about fucking editing it and then having a deadline every week was just getting to be crazy you know and I would catch up but then people would cancel and then I would have to you know like which is natural uh so then I would have to re-up the episodes but like I was never in a point where I had enough of a bank you know but and then there was also you know I don't know it, it's 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 you start something and you kind of just reassess why you're doing it over, For you know, sure. over time. Yeah. Right? I and mean, it, that's like the nicest thing though, is like, um, I, I haven't had anybody over for mostly butter in COVID. And even though folks are vaccinated and now, I was like, I'm just going to like, you know, rethink how I want to do this because I yeah. think, a, I'm running out of things that I can actually bake, which is a real issue for me. You know, like now people are coming to me with break projects in ways I can't actually do. Um, and B, it's like, is there another way that this, is there another way that this looks like, looks for me that isn't so, that doesn't have to like be transactional or feel like awkward or weird or like people are coming into my space that I don't know, or I, I don't know. I, I really don't know, but like, you know, even with bulk space, we are trying to reset our goals. You know, next week we're going to meet to like, we're a collective that sort of gives space to marginalized folks who have historically not been given that space. So, um, you know, we're just trying to meet next week. We've been doing this for a couple of years and like reset our goals. Like what yeah. is it we want and how do we get there? Like, and the, the world is always changing. So you always have to fucking continue. Like, I mean, everything's changed after COVID. I tried yeah. to start, I tried to do the show uh, during COVID and it was just really difficult. Uh, oh, like, really? Yeah. It, I, just emotionally. Cause I was like so isolated and going through my own shit and I had to like get through all of that, you know? Um, yeah. I was so angry at, at, at just the situation and how it was being handled that I would have just ranted like rage. The whole thing would have just been... It wouldn't like, have been interesting. It, it, yeah, like, it would have just I, been anger. In, yeah, in a, and no one, yeah, like, yeah. it wouldn't have been a, a contribution to anything, you know? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think that, I think that that is an interesting thing about how, because obviously this whole thing has evolved so many different ways, right? It didn't used to be video. It's always like, uh, in fact, once the, once you had a theme I, song. Yeah, like way, way wet back. I have a theme song. I listened to Kellen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's like old school. That was back when I used to do like a three hour interview and split it into two episodes, right? Oh, yeah, Where, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was like, uh, it's a lot of uh, of adjustment and and trying to figure it out. But I thought that when I would when I would do like basically, you know, now that I have the channel and and the YouTube and now it's a video podcast I'm less interested in fucking running the Instagram account as a as like a a gallery space you know cuz it's just killing me you know and then it's, sometimes people sell me send me images and I'm like I'm going to curate this and then like that's extra effort just so that I can keep like cuz not that their work is not good is that sometimes people aren't thinking in the context of what I'm trying to, of like how I want to present it on, you know, yeah. and like not everything goes together in one five 
image seven five to seven image posts so like people will send me a bunch of disparate things and then like that's a whole other drain if i could just have an intern and exploit someone it would be amazing <laughs> i mean go pick one of those young csun kids and be like hey I, are well, you good at the internet come on at over. this point i i first i felt bad about that but at this point i do feel like and i dated someone who was like you shouldn't feel like you're exploiting them like you have knowledge that you can give them an experience or, yeah. that they can get. And I was like, all right, that, that was like, you know, but I've also thought about like hiring people in the Philippines and shit, which is what, what oh. the other podcast <laughs> does. And I'm like, that has its own moral things. That and, has like, its own issues. I yeah. Mean, also, you know, we've been, I've been talking a lot with folks about, um, capital, like rethinking capitalism. So like, maybe you can't pay them, but like you said, you have skills and knowledge and, yeah. connections in other ways and and you know maybe it looks a little bit more like a share than it does uh like yeah but, i take from you and you give to me you know but at the same time i've had experiences where i've done free work for people and i've not yeah. been on the other side of that relationship but from the side of the person that was doing the free labor one of the things that i notice in that situation is that the person that's getting the free labor starts to resent you because there's like a sense of debt that is not necessarily being fulfilled. And so Wait, that, from who's from, from who, the, like, so like the unpayer I, is like, uh, you yeah. owe, I owe you or you owe. No, the unpayer feels bad and guilt and it turns into resentment sometimes where it's mm. like, Oh, I'm exploiting you. And now I resent you because it reflects negatively on me. I've had that happen. Like I moved oh, here wow. in 2008, it, it, uh, right when the, the, the whole economy came. Yeah. And so I was doing a lot of interning that led to nothing. So, but, you know, and then like, who's to say that like, what if I just go fucking crazy and I just stop the podcast and become a recluse? And now I've taken someone's hard earned labor and it's just dissolved. No, okay. I'm being dramatic. <laughs> I check in on this in a couple of weeks and it's like, no, he just fully moved to the middle of the desert. Nothing, <laughs> took nothing with him. Just what? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've, I feel like I've taken enough of your time, but I really no, appreciate you great. being on the show. I, this is yeah. so much fun. I definitely would love to bake. Uh, I, I'm feeling like, uh, I'm going to be eventually just like awkwardly show up and, and, yeah. and to, and to Detroit and be like, hey guys, and you guys are all be like, who the fuck? What? Oh, <laughs> fucking weirdo. <laughs> we don't no. know you like that. <laughs> um, Emily's family is in Illinois, and I've been trying to convince her every time she comes to Illinois to stop by Michigan. I and I've been trying to convince Helen to come out here. Maybe just take like a Monte Vista, uh, like field trip, trip to Detroit. Yeah. Field trip. yeah. Uh, yeah we were gonna like do a show out here together um before it all like terribly yeah. fell apart but um uh yeah come out it's interesting there's it's an interesting place people who come and visit detroit are always left with like an uneasiness because there's a lot of like you know there's great things like everyone has space but then it's also like gentrification and the difficulty yeah. around um or the like d difficulty is not the right word but like in a majority black city why are all the galleries white you yeah. know like those kind of things that make it feel well, it, it, it's one of those lows. fucking <laughs> anno annoying things about like artists are like so discarded in american society specifically like they're just kind of like uh oh you're an artist like <laughs> oh you what a waste of your fucking life. oh you're not making you're not winning the fucking rat race <laughs> right um but i don't know like i kind of lost where i was going with it but the, the just sort of the the feeling of like the idea that at the same time oh i figured it out the at the same time like when we start doing our own shit in neighborhoods, like people want to be there, you know, yes. like, and, and, yeah. and that's like one of those difficulties that it happens out here in LA too. Like, although all of the, the artists, the, uh, what's it called? The, the, the art, the brewery has been here for a long time and it hasn't fucked this neighborhood up in the same way. The Angel city. 
No, the 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 art brewery. The, there there's oh, a place oh. here in the, in this area. Uh, yeah. It, that's that's called the brewery, uh, and it. Um, I mean, and that's like basically one of the reasons that I don't say what neighborhood I'm in, right? Like, because I, I don't want to be like uh, fucking Mark Maron and be like. Raise my property values. I own a house in he- <laughs> in Eagle Rock or uh, in Highland I, Park. I, I, I mean, want everybody I, to know that uh, what's his name? That uh, what's the guy? Fucking uh, Mad Lib lives in the same neighborhood. I want you guys <laughs> to know so that our fucking property values skyrocket. Woo-hoo! The fact I so I have a friend that lives in Mount Washington, and when they moved there, it was like it wasn't like affordable, affordable. But I remember being like, they moved from the west side, and I lived on the west side, and I was like, why would you move all the way out there? like you know like I it was just one of those like it Mount Washington in 2014 felt so far away from the west side like it just yeah, felt yeah. all the way out east right like what part of my LA brain, did you live in I was I was in um and I was in Mar Vista so I was Mar like Vista? Okay. between Culver City and, and Venice um uh, I used to I used to live around there I used to live on the west side I just it, uh it's first, only you, since 2017 that I've been on the east side yeah I I just loved being near the water. I was right on Venice Boulevard and like just Mar- loved no Marvis being... is nice. You can like it's like the hill. It's got one of the Grand View is one of the coolest streets that I've ever seen. It's yeah, like you when you're driving agree. from the bottom of it, it's disorienting because all the line like it's got so many little like uh step hills yeah. right like it like yeah. it, it's a hill and then it goes straight and, or it flattens out and then it's a hill and it goes straight and you look up at that street the first time i saw it i was like i wasn't even high and i was like what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> <laughs> it's nice it's but that is the part that they gentrified first like all of that area i i was Absolutely. in culver city and uh i was there for a really long time that's where like the hip galleries are if you're not from la yeah uh, where what's it called? Um, Blum and Poe. Blum and Poe and uh, uh, Cherry and oh, Martin. There's Bunch another one that was called something, and then it closed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, LAX Art or Lax Art or whatever. I've never. Yeah. I've only seen it. I've never heard someone pronounce yeah. it. But, Me neither. Uh, but yeah, so all of that that neighborhood, my rent went up uh, three hundred dollars in one month. That's not surprising. I I every so you know when I have sort of threatened to leave Detroit it's I've looked at my old apartment and recently it went from 900 it was 900 I mean you know back in 2015 but now it's like 1450 for a studio like right on you know and I was like 1450 1450 for a studio I mean you know that's a lot that's, that's crazy. a lot and it was that's like LA prices no oh, not here back back in back oh, in LA oh, okay. when I would look at right. Marvis that's what Mar Vista studio yeah, prices that's, are now that, like you can't get a place like that anymore yeah, there's wild. no way you can't even get uh, so i'm I, i've been here in a long for a long time a lot of the people in this area are uh it's like one of the only places that still has buildings that are old enough to have uh, rent control so i'm not paying that but like it's yeah. a really fucking small space and if i grow out of it it's i'm i may have to Where end do you up go? In fucking montebello or some shit yeah you know? i mean kellen's down in long beach which is also yeah. getting expensive and yeah, yeah. you know i think emily bought a house in Inglewood. It, but it, you know I, but even the friend who moved out to mount washington like mount washington is crazy expenses now too like even yeah. going all the way to the east side is like no longer an affordable space Thanks they're to trying to tear the, they're trying to tear this neighborhood uh, they they like it's uh they, they're basically this area is all going to be for usc students because they're it, we're near the keck medical center yeah and so i've had uh uh um what's it called sarah clandening who is a the like part of the neighborhood council she runs this intelligence operation like uh she's kind of an activist as well but um the and and then uh, i had all like a, a bunch of the neighborhood councils on uh, people on all at once and they're basically part of this like uh, contingent that just does research on the neighborhood and does research on who's buying property and just fights like fucking tooth and nail. They were trying to they they, they when they were running they got like they they got elected into council it, it, and and but like they were writing smear pieces on them and I was like hey Sarah you know you've made it right. <laughs> Yeah, people are writing mean stuff about you. Yeah, and when you and you when know. you're fucking, you know, so yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy everywhere. I don't even know. Like now with like you, you know, we we should start wrapping up because I feel like yeah. this is, we're just gonna keep going and, and, 
uh, now that we're new friends. But I, do, I uh, like I, I don't want to keep you too much of your time, and I definitely want to have you back at some point. So yeah, I don't want you and to be we'll like I don't want to talk to him for another five hours. No, <laughs> then we'll talk about Fast and the Furious, which is a huge passion of mine. Yeah, I can't believe you didn't go with Fast and the Furious, although although I'm, I'm, trying mean, to I'm be happy a with serious. I'm trying to be a serious person and not be not a you know um, I my like see, Fast I got, and the again, Furious and I, movies are like I still haven't no, seen the ninth I, one but I, it's, I haven't either because I want to see it in theaters and I'm yeah. a little nervous about theaters yeah that's my hold up yeah but what's it called yeah that that shit is crazy uh, <laughs> that whole franchise is insane uh, Vin Diesel is more of a genius than I ever gave him credit for he like I thought he was fucking up his career. Uh, he was just waiting it out no. and, and negotiating and fucking waiting for that franchise to come back around and be relevant again. <laughs> he did a great, he did a great thing. And there, he's also in a new movie called bloodshot. It's like three hours long. He doesn't move his lips one time as he's, you know, he like mumbles. And mm-hmm. in this movie, he doesn't move his mouth. Not one time as he speaks. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. It's, it ended up on time. a bad movie podcast, so I definitely want to watch oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. You no, in, in a good way. In a good it. way. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 only fun. It's only yeah. a good time. Yeah. Someone anyway. someone was <laughs> recently was like saying that they went went to the ninth uh, uh, Fast and the Furious and they walked out when something ridiculous happened. I was like, you're not getting it. <laughs> Where did you go? What did you think it was going to be? What did you think was happening? <laughs> It's like, these are not humans, recently. bro. Yeah, he catches people midair. What did you think was gonna happen? One oh, of my favorites amazing. is is, <laughs> is the the part where he's running off the in. Oh, well, my favorite is five. You know what? We're doing that episode already. <laughs> okay, Never okay. mind. It's lovely having you, Sarah. Uh, it's, and it's great to uh, be with you. And then, uh, what can we promote for you? Your Instagram. Sarah. My Instagram oh. is super Sarah Bear. This is me trying to, I, I got to try to be a serious artist. Um, my Instagram is super Sarah Bear. And, and Sarah also, spelled uh, S-A-R-E, R-E. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's super Sarah and then Bear. And then Bear. And then if you ever come to Detroit, mostly butter, come and For bake. For sure. Send I'll people make you, to come we'll, bake. We'll make pastelitos de guayaba. <gasps> yeah. I'm Cuban. i'm here for that i haven't had that shit in so long that's my thing that's what i want is like shit you remember from your childhood that you just like have you miss i mean you know i I know that we're trying to wrap this up but like the reason i started baking was because i miss food from home you can't really get hawaii food in the mainland and like there's like okay places oh no hawaiian barbecue I'm, I'm it's okay, t- but that's like that's like that's like meat. Like even Rutz Hawaiian Cafe. Like is, that, like, is that actually accurate? Is it? I was making a joke. Yeah, isn't there a place called Ono Hawaiian? Isn't that like in the South Bay? No, am I wrong? No, there, there is. There, there, it's just like a, a fast food restaurant. Oh, okay. I don't know about that, but there's like one down in South Bay that has like I think it's just a standalone. There's also a poke place called Ono Poke. I think. Oh, okay. No, just yeah, poke. No. This is a fast food spot that has like, uh, Mm. do you guys eat a lot of like uh, macaroni salad that has a lot of mayonnaise Ah. in it? Okay. Yes, mate. It's just elbow macaroni and cheese. It's just elbow macaroni, mayonnaise, and like carrots. Okay. Delicious. Um, (laughs) Anyway, I started a lot of the baking I do because I miss food from home and I like couldn't get it. And I feel like that was a big part of it was like cook food from home. Things you miss. Things you grew up with, you know? Yeah. I wish I could make picadillo. Uh, and, What's that? And so, uh, it's uh, it's like ground beef in uh, like um, with rice, just oh, okay. like yeah, it, like it's it's just clumpy beef <laughs> it, with raisins and stuff. It's really okay. good. And then yeah. uh, my aunt, my great aunt, I forget. I don't even know how to, that, that genealogy works, but yeah. uh, she had the. Um, the best rep- recipe I've ever tasted for black beans. I've never had black Ooh. beans as good as those. Ooh. So if I could See, get that See, that's like recipe. a thing. Yeah. yeah. Like those, like the, my grandma makes a beef stew. Uh, no, she I also makes an, ox- yeah, she also makes an oxtail stew. And I was like, yeah, I don't, she like explained it to me just so casually of like this and this and this. And I was like, no, it never tastes yeah. that good, you know, but anyway. 
When I was a kid, my my uh, my uh, best friend, his dad worked for KLM, and they were uh, they were no, they weren't Nigerians. The, uh, these guys were Kenyans, and they would they had a houseboy, and he would hook them up with the fucking craziest African cuisine. It was like having like the best feasts. It was insane. And I wonder what kind of life that must have been like for that for the houseboy, you know, like because I'm guessing that they, they they brought him as a as a worker, you know, yeah. like. Yeah. But he got to be in Rome, though. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa! So I don't know, man. I don't but know. <laughs> in my head, it was here, and I was like, "Oh, that's kind of a bummer," you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Know, I've seen. I've seen. They're like here, but well, Rome. I, my my Guatemalan friends when I was a kid, his dad worked for the WHO and uh, for the World Health Organization. Oh, uh, it, it, we're all so like the band. No, the the van. <laughs> no, like we're, we're it's all like uh, UN diploma, dip, diplomacy, okay. like friends that the, okay. the, these guys, and um, and so they had a maid that came and a, 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 and stayed with them from Guatemala, yeah. and she mm. bounced. She just fucking left out of nowhere. What? She was like, I don't know. I she she just she just said, I gotta go home. I can't be here. No, she just like abandoned them. Like, so, like I, I went to start a new life, and like just like was like, bye, thank you for getting oh, me into the country. Oh, use them as her ticket and yeah, to like yeah, yeah. leave, and then just yeah, said, she was with them like- for a really long time too. And then like wow. out of nowhere, all of a sudden, like I was like, hey, where is she? It's like, it's like, oh no, she just left. I think she f- met somebody. It was like some wild romance. I'm like, hey, power to you, man. <laughs> yeah, get your ticket, get out of here. Yeah, wow. I, I wonder if that if they if she if it was like an American and then she got to stay. I don't know. Let's make it a happy ending, know. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She now she's happily married in Connecticut. She's thriving, you know. <laughs> She's got Gucci purses and shit, you yeah. know, living the American dream. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll end on that note. Thank yeah. you so much for being on the show. Uh, you have a website and stuff. Um, I do, but I have not pretended to update it since 2018. Yeah, me neither. So I know I'm so cruel. I ask people to plug their website and I haven't done mine either. All yeah. right. Well, I, we are at what's my thesis on Instagram. I'm at Javier Proenza. You can find us every week at, uh, on YouTube. Uh, well, yeah, at this point, it'll be every week mm-hmm. on YouTube. <laughs> and uh, uh, you can listen to us on uh, your favorite podcasting platforms. We're also audio only. Uh, and thank you so much for being here. Let me stop the recording. Uh, oh, uh, thank you guys for listening. And I'll see you guys next week.